Hey everyone, welcome back to Sweet Yellow House. It is time for our Friday crafts, but before we get started, if you haven't subscribed, please do. It really helps us out and lets us know you like what we're putting out. So this is our inspiration piece, and I am going to transform these two, I don't think they're antique, but these two frames that I uh, purchased from a thrift store. And the first thing I'm gonna do is clean them up and uh, remove the glass. Uh, from inside I was only actually able to remove one of the glass uh, inserts and the other one uh, was glued in so I had to work with it this way so after get I get those cleaned up I'm gonna grab some old-school um, paint from DIY and I am going to just take that and paint over the glass. I'm going to do uh, two or three coats on this uh, only because you could still see uh, through that. It, it didn't cover the first coat. I think because I had some water in here so it just watered down too much so I, I was having to do uh, more coats than I probably um, would have done if uh, I hadn't watered it down but I think I had water in it from the time before so um, that's just what I had so I didn't want to waste it so I went ahead and used it after that dried I grabbed my IOD Lady Shallot stamp set and I'm just at this point trying to decide what I'm going to use to stamp on the front of these. And once I decided, I just am here seeing if they're going to fit and um, testing that out. So I wanted this to be kind of like a slate looking. Um, so I'm rubbing some chalk over this and I'm going to use the erasable uh, white IOD chalk ink. And I have that already on one of the IOD ink pads and I'm going to ink up my uh, stamp here and I think I forgot to sand these uh, when I first started to use them and I think that's why um, this happened to me um, but uh, I'm going to show you here in a second that when I pull this off the ink uh, was able to stick to it but it the stamp came out really light so I'm not sure if that's um, a result of not sanding the stamp or a result of using the chalk ink so as you can see I'm not loving this so I decided to go in with some black uh, paint to darken up that background in hopes that it would show uh, a little bit more um, color with that white so I did two coats with this and I let them dry in between coats and here you see I'm sanding the stamp now because I realized that I didn't do that and instead of using the white chalk uh, erasable ink I'm using just the white ink and I'm going to um, ink up a new ink pad with that. And a tip uh, is make sure you mark the tops of those because it's hard to tell what's white ink and what's white erasable ink. So again, I'm inking up th that stamp and then I'm gonna place those carefully onto the uh, front of that. You can see here that I'm holding with one hand that stamp down in place and I'm moving my other hand. So once I always have one hand holding and one hand um, pressing uh, around because if you try to do that, then you run the risk of, of smearing that stamp and it being uh, and it moving. Sometimes when you don't use a backing to the the stamp will stick to your hand and lift it and you don't want that to happen. So always hold down with one while you're moving the other, um, making sure that you're holding that into place. Yeah. 
And as you can see with the black background and the white really shows up and you get a much a cleaner look, a more vibrant look, and that's what I was going for. So once I got those down, I let them dry, and then I realized that I was missing a little something, so I wanted to do some kind of label or something, so I grabbed the uh, rose uh, toil stamp set, and I'm pulling some labels out of that. So here you see I'm just trying to decide uh, which ones I'm going to use and where I'm going to place those before I actually start stamping. And again I'm sanding. Uh, this really does help so don't, don't forget that step and uh, inking up that stamp and placing it. And again, you can see that I'm making sure that I'm holding it down with one hand and moving my other hand around to make sure that I got a good uh, image pressed down. And that's how those came out. I didn't seal these um, because I didn't see the need to, but if you, you definitely could do a seal on them. Just make sure that if you wanted to keep that flat black look that you uh, use a flat uh, sealer on there. I was very happy with these. Uh, I thought they came out really good um, and really close to the inspiration uh, piece that I was following. The next inspiration piece is like a, a farmer's market sign and I really uh, like that and I started out with some faded burlap uh, mixed with some water and I put a good amount of baking soda in here. Now this is a, a frame that I had painted uh, last week and um, I never got around to using it and so uh, this is what I started out with. I decided that the burlap was a little bit too dark for me so I used the DIY Vintage White and I just uh, mixed that with some water and I went over that. I didn't use any baking soda because I already had some texture on there and I didn't want to overdo it since I knew I was going to be stamping on this board. I let that first coat dry and then, then I went in with the second coat and um, even though the paint was watered down it still had some really good uh, coverage for it so I did the second coat and I let that dry. I grabbed the IOD farm animal uh, stamp set some, and some black ink with my ink pad. And I used the chicken out of the stamp. And here you'll see I'm sanding again because this is the first time I'm using the stamp. You don't have to do it every time, just the first time that you're using. So I'm inking that with the black IOD ink and I'm going to place that down now. The next uh, stamp set I'm going to use is the Wreath Builder Classic Stamp Set and I'm going to grab um, 
the piece of that that I want to use and I'm just going to start building on this um, this sign using a bunch of different stamp sets to get the elements that I want and again I'm just inking those and putting those into place holding down with one hand and pressing with the other At this point, I mean, really this stamp you can do anything with, even if you wanted to use some uh, molds on this, um, you're totally able to do that and get the same effect. I used some of the uh, Alpha Belly stamp um, elements and just started to kind of uh, put some touches on there with that and the Queen Bee stamp set as well. Once I got that into place, I, I started to grab the letterpress stamp set and I'm going to um, go ahead and make um, the sign part of it. With this little tiny stamp, I'm actually using an acrylic uh, small block because the stamp was just too small for me to hold on to and I thought that would be safer for me to use uh, when stamping this little small element on here. So I stamped fresh eggs on top and marked it open on the bottom. That's the great thing about having so many of these different stamp sets. You can mix and match and just kind of build your own design and everything comes out really one of a kind. And um, it looks really, um, even though they're all different, they look really great together. So I grabbed my Olive Crest uh, mold and I wanted to add another element. I also grabbed the Rosettes mold and I'm just using uh, one of those little elements from there to do the corner pieces with and I wanted to kind of jazz up the frame on this so I'm just making the molds and attaching them to the frame and using my tight uh, bond glue to glue those down. I'm not using any fancy tool, I'm just using my finger to apply the, that glue to the backing of those molds. So that's how it looks there. Before I set that out to dry, I'm going to take my big top and I'm going to mix it 50-50 uh, big top on 50% uh, water and you've seen me put it in a sprayer and I'm going to do a heavy spray coat on the stamped part of this because I don't want to run the risk of smearing any of that ink. And that's why I sprayed it on instead of brushing it on. So I'm going to grab my vintage linen again after all of that is dry and mix it with a little bit of water and I'm going to go over those molds because they're kind of uh, off uh, white and darker than anything everything else and I wanted to make sure that it all looked cohesive. And I just did a really quick um, coat over the top of this, nothing major uh, since they were so close in color. Uh, anyway, it wasn't anything that I had to apply really thick coats on or uh, many coats. I just did one quick coat and let that dry. Okay. 
Once that paint was dry, I grabbed my DIY clear wax and I'm gonna do a coat over the whole thing. And I'm doing this more or less like a protective uh, barrier um, because I'm gonna apply some dark wax and I don't want it to look too antique. So once I get all that clear wax uh, applied, I'm gonna grab my clear wax again and my dark wax from DIY and I'm gonna mix those together um, to kind of lighten up that dark wax and give it more of a translucent look and I'm gonna start applying that to um, the whole thing. I'm going to do a heavier coat on the frame um, and making sure I'm getting into all those little crevices and I'm going to apply and then wipe back and then move on. Apply and wipe back. I don't want it to sit too long there and uh, darken up that outer frame too much. I am going to apply that to the inner part as well, but what I'm doing is I'm doing the the uh, kind of inside corner of those and then I'm feathering out towards the center so that it's not really dark. Um, it's just a really light wash on the inside uh, with the darker um, coating there. And then I'm gonna, once I get all of that applied and set where I like, I'm gonna grab my gold gilding wax and I'm just gonna go over that with my finger, applying that, um, not too heavily, but um, just enough to give it a little shimmer. And I'm mostly staying on those molds. Uh, I do swipe a little bit on the corners of the frame. Um, but I'm not being too careful, but I do want to stay mostly on the, um, the molds uh, that are applied there. Thank you all for watching and spending your time with me. I really do appreciate it. And again, if you haven't subscribed, please do. It lets us know that you like what we're doing and um, hit the notification bell so you get notified whenever we upload a new video. And we'll see you soon.